Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and lovely greetings from the Airbus A220 Aerotask flight simulator here in Munich, Germany. In today's video, we'll be taking a closer look at the switches and buttons found on the yoke, side stick or control column of a passenger jet, as well as counting down the top 10 most unique yokes found in disguise. There's plenty of good information in this one and a few that might be surprising to you. So let's get started. Air France 65 Super, wind 26 right, 4, runway 25 left, go for takeoff, traffic two and a half mile final. So let's start by discussing the way the pilot controls his aircraft. Now the flight control column looks different in each aircraft but functions almost exactly the same no matter what type you fly. Some companies are famous for their iconic design styles such as Boeing's classic yoke or the renowned Airbus side stick layout which my friend pilot Alexander loves to brag about in his Airbus A380. Some companies also switch between layouts such as Bombardier, who uses yokes in their passenger aircraft like the Q300 and the Q400 and their Challenger jet series while using a side stick in their new private jet range such as the Global 7000. Now that's a pretty aircraft right there. An exception to these two classic designs is Embraer who famously uses a sort of upside down yoke which can be seen here in their Phenom jet. All of these control columns work to provide pitch and roll control to the pilots by either pushing the controls forward to pitch down, pulling back to pitch nose up, or rolling the wings left and right by using the ailerons. Now, on all of these control columns, you'll find a few common switches which the pilot uses throughout the flight. Now, these include the autopilot disconnect switch used to take manual control of the aircraft. The trim switches, usually split into two, which we'll discuss in a minute. The push to talk button, or buttons, which are used to transmit the pilot's voice over the radio or through the intercom to speak to your colleague or ones connected to the ground crew. And finally, the checklist holder, which, apart from the side stick, is often on the yoke to allow pilots to place important documents or checklist in front of them for easy reference. Now you might ask, why do they split the trim switches? Well, the answer is to provide protection against a stuck switch. Now let's say that one of the switches gets stuck with the nose down command. Now because the other switch is not activated, the aircraft doesn't move. So pilots use both switches simultaneously to move the trim actuators. So it's technically a fail safe option. But should for some reason both switches fail in your yoke, you have the backup option on the center pedestal next to the throttle quadrant. The alternate trim switches. And as you see here, they are yet again split for protection. And in the base of the yoke, you may also find a small motor with a special safety roll. Comment down below if you know what it is. Okay, enough of the learning now. Let's count down the top 10 yokes or flight control columns you might see in your next aircraft. At number 10 comes in, in my opinion, the ugliest yoke ever, but it's certainly unique. This is the square yoke found in some old bush planes and fitted in the 1964 Cessna 172E aircraft. This old design may have helped inspire the modern yokes in Cessnas today, but I'm glad this one didn't continue. At number nine, we have the unique design feature of some older Boeing 737 yokes, which feature a three digit scroll wheel to help with memory items. Pilots can use the feature to help remember call signs or clearances they receive from ATC, such as headings or flight levels. But comment below with any extra use you can think of for this scroll wheel. Number eight is the only Airbus aircraft to feature a traditional yoke design rather than the usual side stick. And this, of course, is the Airbus A300. And as many don't know, this is one of the first Airbus fly-by-wire planes, by the way. Number seven is a yoke design found in two great little aircrafts, which is the pass-over yoke. The Twin Otter and the Bonanza 
can both be seen with this unique design which allows the pilot to literally pass the controls over to the other seat during flight. How cool is that by the way? At number six comes a unique button found on the yokes of firefighting aircraft. These yokes feature a water drop switch to allow the pilot to easily dump the water on exactly the right spot. Number five is the Pilatus Porter Central Stick Design. Now this cockpit features a small shell below the gauges which can be used as a visual aid to help the pilot determine the proper stick position for rotation. Now many pilots of this type know that by just lining up the stick with the shell and with your thumb extended holding against the shell, they will have the perfect angle for takeoff and rotation. <laughs> Number four on this list is another Pilatus Porter aircraft, this time the PC-24. Now this yoke looks like something from the future, looking more like a PlayStation controller than a flight control, maybe perfect for young gamers looking to fly in the future. <laughs> At number three is the yoke design found in the DC-3 and a very unique aircraft called the Air Coupe. Now the Coupe was designed around the same time as the DC-3 with the idea of replacing the family car with a family plane. As such, both aircraft feature a steering wheel like you would find in almost any road vehicle and the air coupe even goes a step further by having just a single brake pedal at the pilot's feet. I mean, this is really unique. So you actually steer the plane on the ground by using the steering wheel. Now the runner up in the number two spot is one of the most legendary aircrafts to be ever built. The Supermarina Spitfire and its unique spade type yoke, sort of oval looking yoke. Now this odd design also is found in some Harvards, also known as the T6 Texan, is a classic in Warbirds but fell out of favour for more modern designs after the war when pilots no longer needed to wear heavy thick gloves and so could easily use more ergonomic designs like you see today. And a few honourable mentions before our winner are the vintage wooden control sticks found in some World War I aircraft which feature no buttons at all almost like flying a wooden broomstick. <laughs> and the other mention goes to the Cirrus side stick design, which features a unique angled design, meaning its centered position looks like a steep turn in other aircraft. If you know the reason why this yoke is angled like this, please comment below. And finally, in number one is none other than my favorite aircraft of all time, the Concorde. Concorde's yoke was one of the first to feature a fly-by-wire control system and even more interestingly also featured a feel feedback system unlike many more modern aircraft. Many fly-by-wire aircraft do not allow the pilot to feel the aircraft's position or the control forces through the yoke or side stick, however Concorde did, giving the pilots a unique control feel for the aircraft and earning itself my number one spot. All you need to know about fly-by-wire, click this video right here. That's it for today. What do you think of this list? Are there any that I should have featured or have I forgotten some of the iconic ones? Please comment below. Thank you very much for watching. Here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check. Activate the notification bell, check. Follow my Instagram account, check. And perform a touch and go at my website, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe.